Hi friends, this is Zuts, although if no one's here to see me, do I really exist? And today we're gonna be doing a tier list of all the iridescent, aka ultra rare add-ons for killers in Dead by Daylight. Now, I've made a video before where I detail all of the add-ons for every killer, tier list them, and explain them in great detail, break them down, blah blah blah. This is not gonna be quite the same, we're not gonna go into super long detail, we're just gonna compare them to each other, assess how strong they are, from OP and really really uh, game-changing and strong, to so bad that you probably don't ever want to use it. And everything in between, obviously. There is a great chasm between the best uh, ultra rare add-ons and some of the worst, so it will be fun to see um, what the final product looks like. We're going to be using tiermaker.com, and we're going to start uh, right now with the Apex Muffler for the Hillbilly. Uh, an add-on that basically makes it so that your terror radius uh, is the only distance from where Sawara can hear your chainsaw. If your terror is smaller, or if it's gone, your chainsaw is completely silent. This add-on goes really well with a bunch of perks, with other add-ons that makes your terror smaller, and it's actually quite good. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't help your chainsaw be any faster, or make you move any quicker, or charge it up faster, or anything like that. So, it only really helps in catching two hours a little bit of guard. If you happen to be in a map that's already difficult to play, it doesn't really do a whole lot. Now, the other add-on is the Iridescent Brick. And this add-on, when you've been using your chainsaw for 2 seconds, removes your terror radius. But it doesn't really matter, because your chainsaw is very loud. You could pair both of these add-ons together, and after 2 seconds of using your chainsaw, you have no terror radius, and thus you make no sound with your chainsaw. But by itself, this add-on is very mediocre, and even paired with the Apex Muffler, it only works in a handful of big maps. And once the novelty wears off and 2 hours are aware, I think is a quite a mediocre add-on. Uh, next up is the Iridescent Blight Tack from The Blight. Uh, this add-on makes it so that your final uh, uh, hit on your very final lethal rush is actually an insta-down. Survivors get no warning whatsoever, uh, they have no idea this add-on is in play until suddenly you hit them with it. Now, if you're a beginner Blight and you try to use this add-on, you're going to buy your nails out of frustration. It is so difficult to use it. Trying to force a hit by bumping into something unnecessarily uh, often is a, a really bad uh, idea. However, very good blights understand that they don't need to use this add-on all the time. They'll just use it when it's convenient and play normally otherwise. And the sheer amount of, of, of pressure this add-on can put on a team if you just happen to hit a survivor, unhook him, and install them when they're healthy is immense. This add-on is really really strong. Perhaps the only reason you don't see it more often is because the other blight add-ons are just as good. Or even better. But definitely, definitely strong. Um, although difficult to use, for sure. Uh, next up, also for the blight, is the Compound 33. The Compound 33 has a bunch of different uh, effects. It gives you extra uh, blood point, I think, for slowing down survivors. It slows down survivors a little bit when you bump near them. They get a visual cue, so you can tell. But the most important thing this add-on does is it lets you slam into a pallet and break it faster without having to use your cane. So, it basically is a brutal strength in form of an add-on and makes you break pallets very, very quick. Now, there's not a lot of things that keep a Blight from getting to you. Uh, he can play around windows really, really well. He can play in the open really, really well. Pallets is, you know, one of the few ways to delay him, and this add-on makes him eat through them very, very quick. I wouldn't call it OP, but it's definitely very, very strong. Uh, next up is the Iridescent Flesh on the Cannibal. Uh, the Iridescent Flesh will allow you to immediately charge up your Chainsaw again and keep going uh, the moment you hit a Subaru. Doesn't seem immediately uh, super powerful until you learn how to use the Cannibal and then you realize that this add-on is an absolute monstrosity. Really, really, really powerful add-on. Um, if you hit a Subaru right as you run out of charges and there's another Subaru nearby, if you get three charges, and you just so happen to have a chili, for example, those three charges will take you so far. So this add-on will let you hit multiple Subarbors more easily. It will let you hit the same Subarbor if they have borrowed time. Absolutely guaranteed to catch them. Um, and yeah, it's it's pretty ridiculous. In, in the one uh, in the one-on-one -on -one, uh, encounters and the one-on-one -on -one chases, the add-on is not quite as useful. Although you could still get some use out of it by downing a Swabber using an extra charge to make it to a pallet and break it and kill two birds with one stone. So definitely, uh, definitely strong. Um, I would put it maybe perhaps here so far. Uh, next up is the other uh, 
cannibal add-on, the Carbonate Returning Guide. Now, this add-on, I am almost certain, is bugged, and your speed right now is way slower than it should be. Way slower. I am almost convinced, even though the developers have not acknowledged it, that it is not supposed to be this bad. In its current condition, it's definitely an awful, awful add-on. However, I'm going to assume that I'm correct, and that this add-on uh, should work the way it used to work some patches ago. Uh, basically, it takes all of your charges and turns it into one big charge. Uh, if you're using Play With Your Food, now you only consume one token, so this turns you a bit more into all cannibal. And even though you are a bit slower, you do go for longer, so this simplifies your chance, so it's good for beginners. And uh, it can also work really, really well with the Eerie Flesh for a number of reasons, has some interesting combinations. Uh, however, it's not a particularly good upgrade to your chainsaw, even though there are some cute things you can do with it. It's one of those add-ons that doesn't really turn you into a considerable uh, threat, uh, in my opinion. For that reason, I would say it's rather mediocre by itself, unless you really throw uh, stuff around it. And even if you do, there's other add-ons that would do better. So I would say it's mediocre. Uh, next up is the Tattoo Middle Finger uh, from The Clown. This is the lesser popular of the two clown add-ons. It's the one that makes it so that when you um, hit a survivor with your purple cloud, you will see their aura. This is a really good add-on. Um, one of the things that the clown can do best is um, impair the visual uh, of the survivor, make them panic a little bit and hit them around corners, or do crazy mind games where survivors go a little bit into the open and because they're slowed down, you catch up and hit them before they can make it to a pallet or a window. This is like running arm all ears on basically every toss and it helps so, so, so much. Now, because other add-ons are also strong, it's often overlooked, but it is a very, very good add-on, no question about it. Now, the other add-on, however, is uh, arguably even stronger, and pff, you could almost put it in the OP category. I am, I am honestly very, very on the fence about this one. Uh, the redhead pinky finger makes it so that when you do a direct hit on a survivor, uh, for the duration of their of their slowdown, basically, you can instant on them. Uh, as you can imagine, this is pretty strong. One of the things that the clown lacks in his kit is lethality, so this add-on solves that. If survivors are really smart and they move side to side, you can slow them down with one bottle, and then when they're slowed down, hit them with this. Uh, again, just like the iridescent blight tag, I think it's um, it's also pretty powerful in the sense that survivors have no idea that you have it until they are basically uh, at your mercy and you already hit them with with it, uh, and they have very little time to react the first few times, so definitely, definitely really strong. I would say OP in the sense that this add-on truly, truly stands out uh, for the clown. Uh, in the grander scheme of things, if Swabber's played well, I would say it's at the very, very edge of strong borderline OP. Uh, next, we have the the, the Lepros Lickin'. This add-on is actually incredible, it replaces um, uh, information perks like an absolute champ. Anytime you go through your portal, you will see everyone in the map, you will see the auras, and it will also last for a few seconds, three seconds, I believe, when you come out of your portal. This is incredibly useful. Uh, there's a survivor that's hiding in a corner because they're dead on hook and you need to find them, do a little teleport, and you will find them no problem unless they just happen to be hiding in a locker or something like that. So. This add-on goes really, really, really well, makes you use your undetectable a tiny little bit better, goes pretty well with the other uh, iridescent. I think it's very, very strong. Now, the only thing that's missing, perhaps, uh, is uh, the usefulness that you get from other add-ons in Chase. Uh, using your portals with Demogorgon, as good as it is, sometimes there's really not that much of an advantage, and you should be focusing on your shred, uh, on your shred and thus other add-ons that help you shred through pallets or people faster might even have an edge on this. Still though, I would say it's very, very good. Very, very good, if not downright strong. Um, then we have the Red Moss. The Red Moss makes it so that you are undetectable for an extra 8 seconds when you emerge from a portal. It also removes some of the noise that you make uh, when you come out of the portal. When you go through a portal, the survivors will still hear the map-wide whoosh. Which is not very good, because that kind of gives you away. But for the next 10 seconds or so, you don't make a lot of noise uh, coming out of the portal and you're undetectable. If survivors are paying attention, let's be real, they're gonna hear your stumps, they're gonna hear your, your demo noises. This add-on doesn't turn you into, into a ninja by any means. But 
Uh, it does help a tiny little bit, I suppose, and the extra undetectable is never a bad thing. I would say it's... I would say that compared to the other stuff you can bring, it's a tiny little bit mediocre. Although it does go well with the other add-on, uh, if you use it. Yeah... Mm. It's... it's not... That crazy. I'm gonna put it uh, at the top of the mediocre uh, list so far. Uh, next up, we have the Iridescent King and the Iridescent Queen. Uh, the Iridescent Queen basically makes it so that anytime you shock or blast a survivor, they gain a, uh, a static charge. And anytime they come in contact with another survivor, they'll blast that person. And it will come like a shock. So, survivors are forced to not rescue each other, or not work together on gens, or not heal each other if they want to avoid this fate. The only way to avoid it is by staying close together at the time of the blast, or at the time of the shock, which is obviously very, very difficult, because you typically don't shock two survivors at once. Uh, the counterplay is difficult. The the pressure that you build up by making them go into tier 3 more often and having to snap out more often is pretty good. And as you can imagine, being in tier 3 with other add-ons has nasty consequences. Uh, the Iridescent Queen is definitely, definitely very, very good. Um, next up is the Iridescent King. The Iridescent King is an amalgamation of all of the side effects of the other add-ons, and they can all happen simultaneously. This is very confusing for survivors. Um, there's so many things that happen uh, with Iridescent King and so many things you can do and the, even though it doesn't help you directly chase like the disciplines or the range add-ons would, it's very, very, very annoying and obviously this will absolutely confuse the, the hell out of any beginner player that doesn't really understand how many of these Doctor side effects work. So for that reason, I, I think it's fairly, fairly strong. Um, yeah, I think I think that would be I think that would be fair. Next up is the Red Pain Brush from the uh, Nightmare, and this add-on makes everyone start out asleep. They can wake up by clocks, and they can wake each other up, which obviously gets slower and eventually is basically impossible. But they cannot wake up by missing skill checks, which is a really really nice thing. It means that if you want to have a skill check build on Freddy, um, this add-on can help you out as they will miss skill checks and not immediately wake up. Uh, the most important part about this though, there are two really good things that happen when everyone is asleep and it's harder for them to wake up. Number one, you get your teleportation power quicker and you can use it more and more repeatedly, that's pretty good. Number two, they are immediately susceptible to your dream snares or your dream fake pallets. And this is very very good. If you've chased a survivor for the first minute in a game and you try to use snares, they're basically useless unless you can hit them first. Uh, so this add-on for that reason is perhaps pretty strongest by a long long shot. Survivors will be very aware that you have it, um, but still, like, it, it is, by, I think, by far the best add-on on Freddy right now, after after all of the reworks. Um, uh, there's also the fact that when you are asleep, Freddy is a little bit harder to, to, to detect, and you do not build up uh, perks such as uh, you know, a stakeout and whatnot, if you have that kind of stuff, so... Yeah, uh, tons of advantages, almost no drawbacks to using to using this add-on compared to almost anything else. Uh, the black box, however, uh, is really not nearly as, as useful. It's a very, very situational add-on that shouldn't come into play most of your matches. Uh, so what the black box does is, if a survivor is asleep and they open a an exit gate, for the next 15 seconds or so, that survivor has a mini blood warden where they won't be able to escape. As you can imagine, if you clutch it and you catch a survivor that just opened a, a, an exit gate, this can give you an extra kill. This add-on can give you an extra kill in a situation where you've already lost that survivor. So that alone is pretty good. But the survivor needs to be asleep. So if they have adrenaline, that's not going to happen. If they just recently woke up, that's not going to happen. And if you don't catch them within that very short time window, it also is completely useful. Uh, if the exit gate has been opened by anybody else, also does absolutely nothing. For that reason, it is... Very, very situational and very, very mediocre. Next up for Ghostface, we have Ghostface Caught on Tape. So Ghostface Caught on Tape does two things. It makes you stalk uh, slower when you stalk normally, and it makes you stalk um, faster when you lean. This is awful. This is terrible. This is so, so bad. Your leaning stalk is already incredibly, incredibly fast. Very, very fast. It takes only two and a half seconds. 
and reducing a second from that, it, it's unnecessary. You don't need that help. And what's going to happen is once you 99 a survivor and you try to get close to, to fully uh, mark them, that little penalty is going to kick your ass. So it buffs something that doesn't need to be buffed and it makes the normal stalking worse for no good reason, in, in my opinion. The worst part about this add-on is that even though it doesn't give you any advantage, it takes up one add-on slot that you could instead use on the pen, on the address book, or the wildlife's matchbook. Anything to help you recover your power faster. So, in my opinion, it is a an awful add-on. Um, the one redeeming quality, if you catch someone in the open and you lean stock them, you can mark them extremely, extremely fast. But for that reason, I would say that Maybe it is slightly better than nothing. So perhaps at the very bottom of mediocre. Next up is the security camera, the outdoor security camera. This add-on is very hard to use, also suffers from the fact that it's taking up an add-on slot that could go to something else. But it's otherwise one of his best add-ons. When you down someone that's been marked, anybody else outside of your terror radius uh, will be revealed to you for 4 seconds, very much like barbecue in Chile. This is pretty good. Uh, if you have a zero terror radius because you were currently blocked, that means you see everyone in the map for those 4 seconds. Now, because you don't have a lot of recovery, because you're using an add-on for this, you can't immediately go and, and catch them and, and, and ambush them, but knowing where survivors are is pretty powerful. And the information from this add-on kind of replaces uh, some of the other perks you could have. So it's actually quite, quite good, I would say. Uh, and I would place it, perhaps, uh, perhaps here, based on, based on the rest. Next up is the Waterlock Shoe from the Hag. It turns the Hag into a very, very unusual speed of 112.5, aka 4.5 meters per second. It is the only killer that moves at that speed that I that I can think of. But your traps are no longer teleportable too. Instead, your traps act like Freddy snares or clown bottles where they slow down survivors. And obviously, unlike Freddy snares or clown bottles, you cannot place them super easily. Ugh. Listen, there might be there might be some crazy scenarios where you can make this add-on work, but it is by all means a massive downgrade to the hacks power, an extremely extremely outdated add-on that is definitely definitely terrible. Um, again, you can make it work if you want to, but you literally are making a good killer worse, uh, and in the process. Uh, oh. Contrasting to that is the mint rack. The mint rack. I think is one of these add-ons that can be completely broken. There's a lot of downsides to using this add-on. You cannot space, uh, you cannot spam the left control or mouse wheel to teleport because this add-on will always uh, teleport you somewhere randomly if you're not very careful. It requires you to look at the trap that you want to teleport to. There's a 15 second cooldown. There are some, there are some things you need to look around when using this add-on. And that's kind of nasty. Um, that you don't have the the ability to to like spam like that. However, if you were to practice a lot and make a build around this add-on, especially if the swabbers are not aware of it, I think this add-on is very very broken. Being able to teleport on command across the 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 across the entire map is just stupid. You can teleport as someone unhooks and hit them with make your choice. You can teleport uh, uh, to, from an exit gate to another exit gate and keep setting traps and make it very, very difficult for survivors to escape. You can keep totems that are really strong, like the Bower Hope and so on, and defend them anytime someone's anywhere near them. Uh, it enables some very, very sleazy uh, gameplay, uh, and it can also be used with the Rusty Shackles, so that when you do teleport, they don't quite realize it, um, if they've triggered the trap and so on. So. Uh, because there are some downsides, I want to maybe put it in the strong category as opposed to the OP, but it definitely borderlines. Uh, it definitely borders uh, the OP, the OP uh, realm. Next up is the Soldier's Putty, which uh, makes the Hunters move at normal killer speed, 115, 4.6 meters per second, once she is out of hatchets. Um... I think this add-on is rather mediocre. Uh, will it catch some people off guard every now and then? Sure. Can it make up a little bit for having only one Hunter's Hatchet if you use the next add-on? Sure. Uh, still, you know, just go and reload. Reload faster. Uh, get some extra hatchets. You shouldn't be chasing people 
with even if you're a little bit faster uh, without hatchets, that's just that's just the, the the sheer fact of it. So a rather mediocre add-on. Um, the Iridescent Head would have definitely been a strong contender for one of the most OP add-ons of the game back when you could use three of them. Now it always limits you to one insta down hatchet. This add-on is pretty it's pretty busted. Survivors again have no warning that you have it until they are hit by it. And there's a lot of things that you can do with this add-on that survivors can literally just not play around. If you face camp someone with this add-on, there's a zero chance someone will get the rescue. Unless someone goes down and then they try to go for a, successive, uh, su uh, a successful rescue afterwards while you have to reload. Uh, very, very, very tough. Uh, has obviously the downside of only having one hatchet, so you need to be able to hit it consistently. Um, that does balance it a little bit, but still. I would say it's pretty busted if you use it right. And the surprise factor will make many people give up uh, alone. So yeah, definitely strong. Uh, next up, we've got the Iridescent Button for the Legion. And basically this add-on does um, arguably two things. Uh, it makes your terror radius um, infinite, completely map-wide, when you begin to use your, your Feral Frenzy. This doesn't really do much other than scare the survivors, but once you hit one of those survivors, that means that anybody else on the map will immediately get detected. So this add-on lets you know where everyone is with a little bit of good judgment. You can very, very quickly get everybody injured, find someone that's hiding, find someone that is dead on hook. So there's no escaping from this add-on and, and the crazy ability to find and slow down survivors that it, it gives the lesion. On top of that, anytime you vault a pallet, you will immediately destroy it. Now, obviously, you kind of vault the pallet and then immediately hit someone uh, to down them because you are in Frenzy and you need to have your four-second-ish cooldown, depending on the other add-ons, but still, slow them down, chase them a bit, they print up a pallet that they shouldn't immediately destroy it. This is a really, really powerful add-on, in my opinion, that makes Legion into a monster in the in the right circumstances. Uh, next up is the Fuming Mixtape, also for Legion. Uh, a lot more mild this time, uh, the Fuming Mixtape literally just makes you see the progression of the generators while you're using your, your Feral Frenzy. If you can give up a perk, like say Barbecue or Discordance, for this add-on, and instead run some other perk to slow down generators, like say Thanatophobia, which is a decent pick on Legion, this add-on does its job. Uh, you will not be surprised when a generator gets done, and unlike Tinkerer or unlike other perks, it's not quite predictable, so survivors will not realize that you have this information unless they have a, a, an enormous amount of insight. So, it's a decent add-on. It's really, really a decent add-on that I would probably pair around here. Even though it's not incredibly impactful and the information you could just gather yourself with common sense or your or your perk. Still though, not, not terrible. Not terrible uh, at all in the slightest. I would place it perhaps here. Yeah, I think that would be fair. Next is uh, Judith Meyer's Tombstone. Now this add-on has a considerable drawback. It requires you to stalk people a lot. It makes you slower, and after you're down with your tier 3, getting another one is basically impossible, so you'll typically want to run it with the other Iridescent that makes your tier 3 infinite, but also increases the time. It's very hard to use this add-on. Um, definitely, definitely, you're better off with the Tombstone piece, the fragment, rather than the whole Tombstone itself. However, with the right build, in the right circumstances, even if Swabbers try to hide in lockers and whatnot, this add-on is pretty nasty. If you make a build around it, I reckon that it is it is a decent uh, add-on that will literally let you murder uh, people. Uh, moving on to the Fragrant Top Affair, which makes your tier 3 uh, infinite, we have a similar deal. It makes you take a lot longer to get to tier 3, but once you get there, it's there forever, never goes away, so others, uh will take a little while to realize that your tier 3 is infinite. Now, extremely good survivors that play super coordinated, they won't mind this add-on as much. But if survivors are not playing super well, or if they have one weak link, you're gonna get tier 3 eventually. And depending on how much of a grip you have on the game, it will be unwinnable from that point forward. Uh, why? Very simple. Uh, they cannot rescue in your face, they cannot do anything in your face. Healing is basically a waste of time. You have a huge uh, lunge, so normal loops are a little bit scarier. Definitely, definitely strong can go with many other add-ons as well and make it uh, even more powerful. Um, so in my opinion, uh, we're talking about perhaps 
this level of strength. Uh, next, uh, the Shattered Stars badge for Nemesis. Um, uh, this add-on has been changed along with the Umbrella tag. It has been changed in the uh, in the PTB. So I'm going to assume that it works like uh, it does in the PTB. So right now, it makes zombies move twice as fast for 30 seconds. In the next PTB uh, content, when it drops, it will be 60 seconds. And as far as I know, these 60 seconds stack. So when a generator gets completed, your zombies move significantly faster. And if two generators get completed, those effects stack together. This is pretty nasty. 60 seconds is now a considerable amount of time. Sure, zombies often are in the middle of nowhere. They get stuck everywhere. They're not always on you. But if they are on you and they move as fast as they do with this, you need to get rid of them very quickly. And you need to stop what you're doing. You don't have 10 seconds to finish a heal. You don't have 10 seconds to finish a totem. You will be harassed out of there quickly rather than, than slowly. And of course, Nemesis will be able to see uh, this. If you blind them, uh, he'll see you from afar. So you'll be giving him more information. Uh, pretty good stuff with obviously uh, a bit of a side dish of, of RNG to it. Uh, hard to evaluate for that reason. If I had to try my best, I would probably say that it's good-ish. Maybe here, perhaps. Yeah. Now, obviously, if a zombie happens to be killed, um, then this add-on does nothing. Uh, but even then, you are making two hours waste time and resources uh, to do that. So I reckon, I reckon it's it's worth the the add-on slot for sure. Uh, the next add-on I definitely don't feel so strong about. Uh, it's the um, if there's an umbrella batch, and this add-on makes it so that when a survivor uses the vaccine on themselves. They used to be um, uh, exposed for about 15 seconds, even though the description was wrong. It now will last 30 seconds. Is that a good thing? No, it's awful. It's awful. Uh, 30 seconds, if the killer is on top of you, is a lot of time. 30 seconds, if you can choose where to go and the killer is very far away from you, it's it's really it's really terrible. Uh, survivors can 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 use uh, their vaccines when you're very far, and only getting to them will already take you 20 or 15 seconds. So the, the 30 seconds of expose really means nothing. Not to mention that survivors can also use this on other people. They can also use it on people that are injured. Uh, it's not very strong. Now, in the best case scenario, a cocky survivor that has just been infected uses this in a chase. Then they drop a pallet, you break the pallet with tier two whip, and then you catch them and oops, they only won't do it again. Uh, worst case scenario, you don't play super good, your ad your other add-on doesn't help you very much, they don't even need to use a vaccine, and you just wasted your time. In my opinion, a very, very mediocre uh, add-on that I would maybe place here. Uh, the Torn Page Book uh, for the nurse uh, will make you be able to blink three times, which is a pretty big deal. Pretty big deal. Um... There's very, very few chances you're going to escape a nurse in the open if she can blink three times. You can blink, get distance, blink, wait for the dead heart, blink again, hit them. Very, very little counterplay towards it. However, a very good nurse, especially if she's running another add-on instead of this, will catch you in the open in no time anyway. The real kicker uh, is using line of sight, using walls, using obstacles to get around nurse. And this add-on makes it definitely definitely harder to catch them there because you cannot blink through solid objects anymore you need to be able to see where you're blinking and thus even though you could get used to it and you could become a strong nurse with this any other add-on would help your normal nurse game, nurse can play more than this so it is by any means uh, an awful an awful add-on that you should probably avoid even though it does have its its place and you could work around it similar to what a luxury the next is the matchbox, um, and it's a similar idea. Uh, instead of giving you an extra blink, it removes a blink, but but it makes the nurse move significantly faster. Now, the nurse is the only uh, the only killer that moves slower than survivors, under 100%, but with this add-on, she actually moves at 105, if I recall correctly. So you're a nurse with only one blink, but that actually moves faster, and this can throw survivors off a lot. Uh, you could also combine it with the other add-on. You could combine it with uh, a bunch of other add-ons for for greater effects. Uh, I still also think that it's a downgrade. Um, 
but it is something you could get used to, and it's not something the survivors will immediately be able to tell. So for that reason, in my opinion, even though the 105 speed changes the way you play Nurse, and you could become a master of one blink hitting, you would still eat the death hearts, you will still eat the the times where your first blink fails and you don't have a backup. So even though I think it's slightly better, it really is not. Uh, it's really not very, very good. Uh, next up is Ranger's Bloody Glove. Ranger's Void Glo uh, Bloody Glove makes it so that survivors absorb their own blood when they drop it against Oni. This is not good. This is terrible. You want the survivors to drop as much blood as, uh, as possible so that you can pick it up, use your power. Uh, but the trade-off is that when they do absorb their own blood, they reveal their aura to you. So especially in indoor maps, if you make an injured survivor go around a little bit and they leave a bit of blood everywhere, you will have these little pads of blood that give away survivors' positions anytime they go through them. This can be very, very useful in loops, where a survivor is waiting behind a wall, trying to make some kind of mind game, and you see them through the wall, and thus it's like an arm all ears kind of effect. However, is that worth the trait of survivors dropping less blood and absorbing it? No, no, it's not worth it. Survivors can also, if they pay attention, see that you have this add-on, and I, I really just don't recommend it. Uh, for that reason, I would say that it's mediocre uh, at best, uh, perhaps even awful. Now, uh, this next add-on, the Iridescent Family Crest, does not have a downside, but its effect is so laughably bad that I, I, I generally, I, I generally think that you should, you should not consider using it at all. When you bump into the ground with the Oni, anyone in 12 meters will scream. Uh, very similar effect to Infectious Fright. If you bump into the ground, you have a big cooldown. If that person screams, they're gonna run away. So your chances to catch them are now lower. 12 meters is very, very little distance. Which means that if you're, if you're looking for someone, they're very likely not within 12 meters. And you are very much better off not hitting the ground just in the off chance. Can this add-on sometimes come in clutch and maybe help you a little bit? No, it really can't. It's such a rare occurrence. The effect is small. Other perks give you information better. Uh, you like, and the only has such good add-ons in the purple, green categories and whatnot. You are much better off never putting this on. Your time when using your power is limited. You don't want to waste it hitting the ground or a chance to maybe find someone, especially when you should only use your power knowing what's already happening. So yeah, uh, definitely awful. Uh, maybe even worse than the Ranger Glow, because even though it doesn't, it doesn't have a downside, it, its effect is really pathetic. Uh, next up is the rule set number two for Amanda. This atom sounds really strong on paper. It makes it so that survivors uh, that don't have an active trap, a trap that's already tickling down and ready to kill them, do not see the boxes. So they will instead have to go blindly and find them, or do gens until it's active. Uh, as I said, on paper, it sounds really, really strong. In practice, it's it's quite worthless. What this is going to make survivors do is, in fact, realize that the traps are not that strong. Um, and just two gens and still later have time. Now, arguably, if you use two very strong items together, like, say, the Creative Gears and the Tamper Timer, then, then, yeah, the traps are powerful and they can kill survivors. But if you're using those add-ons, then you're not using this one. And if you're using this one, you cannot use both. So for that reason, this add-on truly fails at what it's supposed to do. And overall is uh, almost an invitation for survivors to be more optimal and to do gens and not be too afraid of your sometimes mediocre power. So for that reason, it is very, very mediocre and will only really help you if you somehow go against survivors that don't have good judgment and try to look for the boxes blindly and waste five minutes doing so, which I think will happen very, very rarely at almost any rank. Uh, Amanda's letter is also not incredibly strong. Um, it makes you see the autos of survivors uh, near you when you crouch. This is incredibly useful for mind games, uh, for general uh, map finding survivor strategies. Uh, it's pretty good. It's actually a really, really, really nice feature. However, it reduces all of your bird trap uh, carrying from four or five, whatever you have. It reduces it by minus three. So by default, you will only have one bird trap. And there will only be two boxes to search, which you're probably not going to want to camp. So you only have one trap and it can be reduced. It can be, it can be searched really, really quickly. 
This basically removes all of your slowdown as pig. Um, virtually all of your slowdown. And just makes you a little bit better at chase. And the, and the keyword here is a little bit better at chase. It doesn't make you a lot better at chase. Now, some pigs, they are so good that they don't need the slowdown. And they'll send themselves to a map that is very, very favorable for their power. And they'll make this add-on look good. But if you were to run this add-on consistently uh, on a variety of maps, on a killer that's already kind of difficult to, to get good chases going with, you would get your ass kicked on average more often than not. For that reason, I, I think this add-on is, is quite mediocre as well. There are some uses. You could make up for the lack of uh, pressure with uh, um, with perks, and you could use the the auto reading part of it to to be really really sick in in, in your ambushes. But it is, I think, overall a, a bit of a disaster. The iridescent element configuration makes it so that survivors do not see the cube and do not get uh, to solve it early until they are already being attacked by the side effects of the of the summon chains. It will slow them down a bit, it will make them do more gens. Uh, if they're trying to actively prevent it, they'll have to wait until they're attacked and then they'll see it. Uh, but if they get close, they can see it anyway, even with this add-on, so... Um, it seems to be rather mediocre, it doesn't really seem to be all that incredible. I would place it somewhere around here. Uh, that being said, though, it, it will make them have to search more or have to wait longer uh, before they can see it, so it's really not a horrible thing. Next up is the Engineer's Fang, and I think this add-on, when it hits live, will probably be tuned down a little bit. It is by far one of the strongest add-ons on, on, on Pinhead right now, along with maybe um, a couple other purples, and it is, in my opinion, uh, comparatively OP. It makes it so that your first chain on a healthy survivor straight up injures them. And then if they are injured, then your power continues to work as normal. This is... Absurd. This is completely absurd. The only reason why you would uh, want to slow down a survivor is to hit them with your power. So being able, like the fact that this uh, add-on already does that for you, uh, even if it doesn't spawn extra chains on your first hit, it doesn't matter. This add-on is actually incredible. It makes you, it makes it super easy to get everybody injured. And compared to anything else this killer has to offer, is what truly makes him really really impressive. So yeah. Uh, in my opinion, uh, borderline perhaps past the OP threshold. Uh, next up, uh, we have the Iridescent Seal on Plague. Anytime a generator gets done, you will get your power. Now, the power will be shorter by 20 seconds, and you will be a bit slower uh, while you charge it. Um, which are significant, um, significant uh, drawbacks. But getting 5 extra uses of your power at least... If they do all the gens, is uh, and it's pretty much guaranteed. That's pretty damn strong. If your other add-on supports this and 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 helps it to 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 make use of it, you can have Tinkerer. You can have very strong perks. You can camp it out and passively get your power. And survivors can only try to play around it. Typically, they might not even realize you have it until halfway into the game. So, in my opinion, it is a it is a bit of an acquired taste. It is a bit of a, a much like Midrag, an add-on that you have to learn how to how to use. Uh, but it's otherwise really, really, really strong. And and if you did learn how to use it and how to play around it, it would probably destroy the average survivor you play against. Next up is Black Incense, which is somehow even stronger than that. Anytime everybody is uh, someone is injured fully and, and infected fully, they will continue to cough. And anytime they cough, you see their auto for a little bit. They did nerf this add-on, I think, slightly uh, at some point in the past. But basically, this add-on gives you almost nearly permanent wall hacks on anybody and anybody that's that's fully infected. It does take an add-on slot that could go to something else, true. But typically, survivors will not cleanse like uh, like crazy machines. Typically, they will not. Uh, if they do, you're fine. You're played. You have a strong power. Uh, when that happens and you see multiple of them, then picking up one fountain and having the precise knowledge of where everyone is, is just absolutely devastating. Even in normal chase, you can do some mind games around tall obstacles, you're, you're plague, you're tall, but you can still do some mind games if you see their aura. And you can also see them if they try to hide in a corner of the map because this add-on has no range to it whatsoever. It is ridiculously, uh, ridiculously strong and I think... Perhaps a good, 
uh, contender for one of the strongest add-ons in this category. Next up is the Obsidian go uh, uh, Goblet uh, for Pyramid Head, uh, aka the Executioner. This add-on is complete, utter garbage. It is terrible. When you set your trails on the ground and you stay on your trails for several seconds, you become undetectable. What is the point of this? You could try to draw a trail that you can walk through to become undetectable. It is so bad. Run Tinkerer. Just run Tinkerer if you want to catch people off guard on gems or around the map. This add-on works so badly, is so terribly designed, has no real practical applications other than maybe using it as a as a, as a portable in, uh, insidious to camp basement or something like that. Other than that, which is obviously very, very nasty and I don't recommend you ever do, it is genuinely, upsettingly horrible. Uh, and, and has no real applications. Uh, now, in its favor, the other add-ons for Pyramid Head are pretty abysmal on average. So, we can maybe forgive it a bit for that, but it's it's generally terrible. Uh, next is the Iridescent Seal of Metatron. Um, this add-on has two basic uh, ideas. When you send someone in a cage, anybody else that's tormented, you will see their aura. It also has a secondary side effect that might be a bug. And that is that when you send someone into a cage, because they themselves are tormented, you will see them for a brief second. So if you cannot guess exactly what a survivor is, this item basically just tells you. If you look uh, at the opposite end of the map, you'll see the whoop show up on the map for like half a second, which I think is a bug. Uh, but yeah, knowing exactly where you send someone on a, on a, on a cage is useful. So that item does that. And seeing other people that are tormented is also useful because those people can go there and untorment themselves and the person of the cage. So you definitely want to stop that. That being said, because that risk exists, your typical strategy as a pyramid head is to torment cage, torment cage, torment cage, not torment hook. That's it. You don't want to torment, then torment, then torment like legion or plague. You don't want to spread that. It takes too long. It's not guaranteed to happen. And it's very unoptimal as they can get rid of it faster. So... Because that strategy is just bad, and this add-on doesn't really show you anything else, and it's not one of the other add-ons that is better, it is, by all means, an extremely uh, mediocre add-on that I would probably place around, like, here, maybe. Yeah, bad, bad stuff. Uh, next up, the Iridescent Coin for the Dead Slinger. Um, makes it so that if you spear someone from a long distance, which happens to be 15 meters, you can instant on them. Now, a few problems with this. The, the maximum range of Deathslinger's uh, chain, the Harpoon, is 18 meters. And this only works past 15 meters. So you have a very, very small window, which with experience you can more or less figure out consistently, to hit this. Once you hit them, if there's any obstacle at all, at that distance they're probably going to break out uh, of it unless it's a very open map. In fact, in close or, or, or medium close maps, that have a lot of indoor places, say Haddonfield, using using or Badham or indoor maps straight up, using this is literally impossible. So this add-on can literally do nothing. And it's even if you go out of your way to try to camp uh, and, and camp a hook in the open, uh, it gives you very, very, very little stuff. So unlike other instant on add-ons like this or this or this, you kind of really use it in normal chase. And you know. <laughs> It's just widely, widely inconsistent. Because it can potentially give you a crazy good early game. However, that makes it a tiny little bit better than some of the other things we've seen, uh, mind you. Uh, so, yeah, I would perhaps place it there if we really, really have to. The Hellshire Iron uh, is a bit different. When you spear a Sawar with your Harpoon, uh, anyone in your terror radius, you will be able to see their aura. Now, because you are locked to that survivor, you cannot look around yourself. So your limited, your view is extremely limited. You don't really see anywhere. You have a small terror radius, maybe with monitor while you're in chase. You you, you see, but nah, it's it's quite bad. That being said, it's not awful. Uh, if you look if you look in front of you and you don't see anything, that also is information. It means that no one is in front of you. You don't need to worry about someone hiding in a bush in front of you, ready for a flashlight, say for example. So. The information or lack of information this add-on gives can sometimes be a bit useful. Is it more useful that, than some of the other more basic add-ons? No, it's really not. For that reason, uh, I would say it's it's quite uh, mediocre and would maybe place it somewhere around here. Next up is the Mother Daughter Ring for Spirit. Uh, honestly, a contender for the strongest add-on in the game. 
Now, the Spirit moves at a, at a whooping 176 movement speed. That's compared to the 100% running speed of a survivor. When she uses her power uh, with other add-ons to make her charge and move faster. This add-on increases your speed by a ridiculous amount. An amount so, so big that it makes reacting from the survivor's point of view uh, incredibly, incredibly difficult. On top of that, it doesn't give any kind of, of feedback to the survivors because you're invisible or you use this add-on or any add-on with spirit. They might think that they need to wait a second to drop the pallet and you'll appear there considerably quicker than they would think. So very little feedback for the survivors on a kill that's out of difficult to play. Incredible ability to cover distances uh, across the map. Uh, if you need to, incredible ability to close the gap between you and a survivor mid-range. Uh, unpredictable at close range as well. Makes a killer that's powerful. Currently, the spirit is bugged. She doesn't hear very well in phase. But assuming that that gets fixed soon, this add-on is absolutely disgustingly powerful. It makes a killer that doesn't need to be much faster, ridiculously faster. And it does have one downside that doesn't even matter. The downside is that while you're using your power, the survivors do not produce scratch marks. However, while you charge your power, and before you use your power, the scratch marks that they did leave, they are still there. So because you move so fast, you can still see the previous scratch marks. And because you move so fast, if you hear a little branch breaking on the floor, you will be there and hit that survivor immediately. And using sound is the way to go with spirit. So that downside is barely, barely an inconvenience and barely a downside. Next up is Father's Glasses. Father's Glasses is very strong with spirit. It will make it uh, much harder for an Iron Whale or a Cheeky Swabber to escape you. An Iron Whale is very powerful against Spirit right now. Um, uh, always has been, but even more so now that Strider doesn't counter it. So this, this add-on is pretty damn good. Another great perk that you might run on Spirit is Sloppy Butcher to make healing slower. And Sloppy Butcher will make the blood drop more quickly. So this add-on will make you see the broad and it will also be bright by default. So yeah, this is very, very good. I would say maybe this level of good. Very, very strong. Uh, goes well with the modern daughter ring, goes well with other add-ons, and makes it uh, significantly harder for survivors to, to try cheeky things. They also have no idea that you have this add-on ever. They cannot ever figure it out. There's no perk that will tell them that this add-on is being used. So, also has that surprise factor to it. Next up is the Iridescent Stone for Trapper, which will randomly, every 30 seconds, reset, reset one of your traps across the map that has been disarmed. Uh... It's not that incredible, uh, believe it or not. It's really not that crazy. Now, it is quite annoying if a survivor disarms a trap and it just reopens. It, like, this add-on has potential sometimes to do some clutch things. That's the RNG randomness to it. But now the trapper can reset his traps in a couple seconds. Other, other options are typically better. Uh, having extra traps from a bag should be a given. Uh, making the traps catch survivors and not let them go, like the uh, purple... Uh, honing stone would be much more consistent, making the traps darker, making the traps being set and reset faster. All of those things would be more consistent than this. If you want to lock down a place and you're going to stay close to it, you can reset your own traps. Uh, there are some cute things you can do, like trap exit gates uh, with Remember Me and see survivors uh, get caught by 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 this uh, reopening trap. There are some cute things you can do, but typically, as I said, all the add-ons uh, do it better, so it's only okay-ish. Uh, the Bloody Coil. Uh, it gives itself away. Uh, if a survivor disarms a trap and they see that it's red-colored uh, progress bar, they might figure out that you have it. But there's no way, there's no getting around to it. If you want to disarm a trap, if you're healthy, you are going to become injured. So if you're one of those trappers that likes to put traps in the middle of the map where the action is happening, maybe around basement, just be annoying and defend them a lot, this add-on is pretty good for that. It makes survivors not be able to deal with that. Uh, still, survivors can play around this stuff. They can do them while they're injured. They can hold the trap, have someone go through, and then stop uh, undoing it so that they buffer the trap and someone can go through. Um, and there's also the elephant in the room, the fact that your traps should be hidden. The best traps for Trapper, take it from me, is uh, are the traps that are hidden until a survivor goes around and randomly steps on them. If you want to hide your traps, this add-on is perhaps a bad choice. So, I would place it, in terms of usefulness, very close to here in your average game. Uh, now, obviously, if you're playing a tournament and you know survivors are going to know where every single one of your traps is, then maybe you might as well uh, accept the fact that they're not going to be hidden and, and run this. Uh, but otherwise, I would say it's, it's not super, super crazy good. Perhaps we could... 
uh, perhaps I could even like do this. Uh, you can uh, use this add-on to bait cocky survivors into getting injured. Uh, and it could give you a good early game uh, before survivors realize that you have it and start adapting to it. So perhaps that does give it a slight edge over, over certain other add-ons. Next is the iridescent photo card from the Trickster. Uh, this add-on is pretty nasty. You put four knives in a survivor and if they are within M1 range, you can insta down them. Which reduces the typical injure, they make distance, catch up, injure, maybe you get a down. It reduces that. If you catch a survivor in the open, you're basically... Uh, a hailbilly of sorts or a leather phase of sorts in that if they're in the open you're gonna knife 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 down this is disgusting it also you might think okay well i'm a good survivor i'm not gonna be caught in the open i run spine chill uh, i'm gonna be aware well sometimes you will need to open a gate in front of a killer sometimes you will need to do a last second rescue in front of a killer sometimes you might want to do a, a, a terribly inconvenient totem in front of a killer and this add-on will put a right stop to that uh, it's very, very powerful. You don't really see it until you're hit by it either. Which is very, very nasty. And it goes well with with some other add-ons as well. Uh, on top of that, it doesn't really have any downsides. The, the killer can use it or not and just play normally. Uh, unlike, say, the Iridescent Head uh, on Hunters, where it forces you to use um, a very, very difficult um one shot huntress uh, hatchet that if you miss it now you need to reload so it has no downsides to it i reckon that especially uh, uh considering the killer it's on it's quite a game changer and would maybe place it somewhere around here uh just just for that ability to instantly down someone um uh, alone if they're caught in the open and for the fact that it's kind of hard to 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 see it coming uh I'm gonna do a change here as well. Uh, next up is the Death Rose compilation. This add-on makes it so that when you end uh, a, a use of your successful last uh, final uh, main event on Trickster, you get refunded all of your knives. So it's basically as if you had reloaded. In some maps where lockers are difficult to come by, like say the Pale Rose, this can be such a game changer. The pressure that you would lose from going up a floor and reloading on a very inconvenient locker uh, compared to just being able to reload as you're downing survivors, it's crazy. Now, because of the changes to Trickster, he doesn't get his main event nearly as often as before, but it's still really, 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 really good. Even if you don't have anywhere to main event, you can use the main event, cancel it, and get your knives back. So, I rate it as, as a very, very strong add-on, uh, perhaps worthy of being uh, right here um, in, the, in the list. Very, very strong stuff. And obviously, any time, like, if you have less downtime uh, in general, that, that's also very, very useful. A little bit tricky to use, uh, but still, I, I reckon it's very, very good. Next up is the Silencing Cloth. Uh, anytime you switch back to Charlotte from Victor, from whatever event, Charlotte will become undetectable for 20 seconds. In indoor maps, this is an absolute nightmare. In open maps, it's not that big of a deal, but even in those, you will have the occasional survivor uh, being caught off guard by the fact that a Charlotte is now coming um, uh, at them without a Terror Radius or a Red Stain or whatever. Now, uh, typically, uh, as a twin, uh, what you do is you send Victor, you catch one survivor with it, that survivor is oblivious, so you try to ambush it, but if the survivor takes Victor for a, for a ride or if they're very aware, you don't have a lot of uh, great targets. With this, you can injure someone, go for someone else, get Victor back, use it on this new target, uh, then down this new target, then pick them up and still have some um, undetectable still. It's pretty damn good and honestly one of the better add-ons for, for twins. Uh, in my opinion, uh, quite strong. I would perhaps place it here. I think that would be fair. Yeah. Yeah, you could you could maybe put it here. I think this is I think this is fair. Something like this perhaps. Yeah. That seems alright. Uh, next is the Iridescent Pendant. Uh, the Iridescent Pendant is not quite as powerful. Uh, it makes it so that if a survivor kicks a Victor that's idle, that's just not Victor that just failed the pounds and is recovering, but rather a Victor that's just not being controlled by Charlotte, that survivor becomes uh, exposed for, I believe, 30 seconds. Um, I, could, I could do a quick check, but I believe it's 30 seconds. Not an insignificant amount. Um when they basically just tell you where they are. And 
this can be tricky. This can be actually quite tricky. Uh, Victor is a very, very good um, resource to keep people on the ground. But getting them on the ground in the first place can be tricky. If you have a survivor uh, on the hook and Victor's right next to them and someone else comes and they think they're really smart and they kick Victor and suddenly they're exposed, now if they go for the rescue, you can go back and instant on them. And now that they're on the ground, you're going to send Victor out again and catch someone else and, and all hell breaks loose. Survivors can wisen up and start playing around it the moment they find out, and in fact, they should. But... Oops, sorry, some uh, noise outside. Uh, but the fact that it can give you a a, a boost of, of pressure that the the twins is very, very good at taking advantage of uh, in the first place, I think is, is rather, is rather uh, good. So, I would place it on the good category. Next we have the Coxclum, the Coxclum, the Coxclum Clapper for the Wraith. Makes your uncloaking completely silent. And this can be used by itself or with other add-ons to, to cause massive confusion on indoor maps. I don't need to say it is very, very strong. Uh, you will reduce your chances to, to be flashlight burned. You don't need this add-on. Wraith is pretty good. Uncloaking at someone's face with his massive speed is really, really good. But this add-on can get you grabs, this add-on can get you hits on people that would otherwise be able to spring burst away or use a pallet for safety. It's it's very, very strong. And if I had to place it somewhere, I would probably do so over here. Um, would that be fair? Would that be fair? Perhaps a little bit lower. Perhaps something like this would do. And then we have the All Seeing Spirit, uh, which is a basic copy of the fuming mixtape. It makes you see the generator's progress while you are cloaked. Um, and by their by the aura, you can actually tell how close they are to being done. They get wider and wider as they're more and more completed. Unlike Lesion though, it makes a lot more sense on Wraith. With Wraith, you hook someone, you cloak, you go for someone, and that's the time you want to see them. Uh, Lesion, you know, you're not going to use your frenzy uh, naturally, after you hook someone and you're seeking gents to, to go defend, you need to kind of go out of your way a little bit to use that. So this add-on is actually a lot more, makes a lot more sense in Wraith, and is a lot more um, intuitive to use and easy to use. Uh, because Wraith moves so fast with his new base ability, you could give up Discordance, Tinkerer, Barbecue, whatever perk you had to take care of generators and keep an eye on them, and use this add-on instead. Um, and opt for some other strong perk instead, while still having good knowledge of what the gents are being done. I think it is a great, great add-on that I would probably place uh, somewhere around here. Um, that being said, you could just use one of those perks and instead run an even stronger add-on on Wraith, like the All-Seeing Blood, the purple version of this that lets you see people through walls because it's really, really fancy and easy to use in chase and gets you hits that otherwise you might miss out on. So it's not the absolute best, but it is very, very strong. And seeing this... Yeah, I think this seems uh, about right. The area that's on bottom is strong. We're gonna give it a, a bit of a... Uh, a, a bit of a look around. Uh, but the area that's on is strong, but... The area that's much strong, but it's nowhere near as strong as some of these other add-ons. So perhaps we should move it here. Um... I also reckon that this is a bit stronger than we gave it credit for. Um, uh, I think this would be completely fair uh, as well. The Eerie Flash is strong, but not quite as strong. It could be it could be here and it would make perfect sense. Uh, this is also a good add-on, but perhaps not on the same level. Um, honestly, the, the camera is good, not quite as good as this. This seems about all right uh awful 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 yeah yeah that seems about right hopefully we didn't forget any killer or anything like that right hopefully this is the the final list hmm seems about right seems about right yeah Perhaps if I were to spend a little bit more time, I could maybe make some swaps, but yeah, um, I think I think that if you compare them to each other and you try to keep them more or less fair, 
um, anyone else's list would be something close to this. Do let me know what is the thing that I put here that you disagree with the most. Um, because maybe I overlooked something. It's also kind of hard to judge everything compared to each other when it's different killers. I've tried to judge them on, on their own killer and also a little bit as a whole. Uh, so it was very, very difficult. But if you have any thoughts or anything you think I might have missed when evaluating them, please let me know because I'm always willing to learn more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.